Binoculars are especially useful when you're hiking, bird watching, identifying potential photo opportunities. They're also great for giving to people with you who are not photographers and don't have the luxury of looking through the lens. I have here a great pair of little binoculars, the Nikon Pro Staff 7S. These are excellent quality, they're grippy, they're water resistant, comfortable to hold. Now the biggest complaints about these binoculars have to do with the cheap eyepiece and lens caps. They're practically designed to be lost and Nikon obviously cuts some corners there. But in my opinion, it's really not such a big deal and it's pretty telling when that's the main complaint about the binoculars. There's also some fairly serious chromatic aberration. Again, in my opinion, it's not a huge deal unless you make it a huge deal. The most important thing is that the image quality is great. Now, this is not a binocular channel, don't worry. But given that Nikon makes some quality optics, I thought it would be a good idea to go through their binocular lineup because it can be really hard to navigate if you're using their website. There's so many different product lines and models that it's hard to tell what's going on and to compare individual features and specifications. Let's begin with a general discussion about what type of binoculars are right for you. On every pair of binoculars, you will see two numbers. In this case, eight by 30. The first question is always, what do the numbers mean? What do they mean? Well, the first number, 8, refers to the magnification power. When you look through the binoculars, objects are 8 times larger than they are with the naked eye. And 8 and 10 times binoculars are by far the most popular models sold today. 10 times, for many people, is the upper, comfortable, hand-holdable limit. Anything over 10, and it becomes trickier to keep the binoculars steady, especially for long periods of time. The second number, 30, is actually 30 millimeters the objective diameter. So why would you buy binoculars with a larger objective diameter? Say for example, 42 or 50. Larger lenses make for clearer viewing. It's a brighter image. It's especially important when the light starts to drop or at night. Of course, having higher quality glass in general helps with image quality as well. Something you can quickly calculate for any pair of binoculars is the exit pupil size. In other words, the size of the shaft of light that's going to leave the binoculars and hit your pupil. We calculate the exit pupil size by dividing the second number by the first. So 30 divided by 8 is 3.75 millimeters. Long story short, you're looking for an exit pupil size that's greater than the size of your pupils. Outside in bright light, our pupils are only about 2 millimeter in diameter. So any pair of binoculars will do. Our irises expand in bright light and contract in dim light. So that 3.75 millimeter shaft of light hitting our eyes will be great in bright light, but not so good in dim light. Of course, the actual average human pupil size also depends on your age. The younger you are, the more you can take advantage of a higher binocular exit pupil size. Here's the calculation of exit pupil size for different types of binoculars. Now I've highlighted the eight by 42 because with an exit pupil of 5.3 millimeters, these are especially good for low light and nighttime performance. So to summarize, if you're only going to be using them during the day in bright conditions, that first number is the most important, the magnification. At night, you need to look at both numbers. Now here's where you can get a little fancy because in the twilight hours, in between day and night, you can use something called the twilight factor, which is calculated by taking the square root of the two numbers multiplied by each other. In this case, for 10 by 42 binoculars, we have a twilight factor of 20.5. The twilight factor pretty much improves steadily the larger and beefier the binoculars get. For each type of binocular, I've calculated the exit pupil diameter, the twilight factor, the approximate size, of the binoculars, the approximate weight, and this is going to differ, guys, just wanted to give you an indication of roughly what kind of weight to expect. And generally speaking, how good this type of binocular is for various applications. We have the 10 by 25, the 8 by 30, the 10 by 30, another really popular model, 8 by 42. If you just need a pair of binoculars, you're not too fussed about the size or weight. 10 by 42 is generally the recommendation. 12 by 50, 15 by 56, we're just getting into the, uh, the big boys here. So I've divided Nikon's consumer binoculars into three tiers. We have the Aculon A211 series, 
Uh, these are actually very powerful, they're just large. We have the Travelite series, the Pro Staff ATB, and anytime you see ATB, it refers to all terrain binoculars, which offer weather sealing and beefier rubber construction to protect against knocks and falls. The Aculon A30, these are the little tiny guys. And finally, the Trailblazer ATB, definitely pocket sized, but still capable. Then we have the mid range represented by the Pro Staff binoculars. The latest ones are the Pro Staff P3 and P7. Now, the Pro Staff 7S are the ones I have. They're still available in some markets, but they're being phased out. Overall, these are going to have higher quality optics. You will have to pay a little more, but you do get what you pay for in the mid range lineup. Finally, we have the Monarch series the Monarch M5, the more expensive Monarch M7. And finally, the $1,000 Monarch HG or high grade binoculars. Now let's compare the specs. So for each model lineup, we're going to look at the country of manufacture, the shell material, the type of prism, whether it's poro or roof prism, whether the binoculars have anti-reflective coating, whether they're stated as waterproof by Nikon. Now there are no actual IP ratings for any of these binoculars. You're not supposed to go swimming with them. But if you expect to be hiking or traveling, I would go for a pair of waterproof ones that can at least resist rain and splashes and all that. Whether the lenses have phase correction coating, this is applied to roof prisms for, quote, extra definition and clarity. Whether the binoculars feature the dielectric prism coating, which according to Nikon offers improved light transmission, image brightness and clarity. Whether the binocular has a locking diopter, whether the binoculars feature ED glass. As photographers, we already know what that is in Nikon world. That stands for extra low dispersion, which helps to dramatically reduce chromatic aberration. Finally, we have the prices for each of the types. I've selected six of the main types. So let's just go down the list. We have the Aculon A211, the Travelite, which is a Poro prism, the Pro Staff ATB, the Aculon A30, Trailblazer ATBs, Pro Staff P3, which is the budget series from the Pro Staff lineup. Pro Staff 7S, those are the ones I have, which are already pretty good. You'll notice these are phase corrected. The P3s are not. The Pro Staff P7s, I don't see a good reason why both the P3 and the P7 exist. The P3 are just a really cut down version of the P7s. You miss out on face corrected lenses, dielectric coating, uh, all to save $50, I, you know, I don't know. We have the Monarch M5s, the M7s, which are very popular in the bird watching community. And finally, the Monarch HGs, which are the only ones made in Japan and are actually made from a magnesium alloy shell. They're also a thousand bucks. And I think if you have a thousand dollars to spend on binoculars, you probably have $2,000 to spend and in that case, you would just go for Zeiss or Swarovski. So I think the best value is actually right around that $200 mark. One interesting thing is if we just look at one of the lines, for example, the P7s, the prices only really vary by 20 bucks. Whether you want the 8x30s, you're paying 180. If you get the 10x42s, you're paying 200. Now, while these specifications like phase corrected glass and dielectric coating are fun to compare, there are actually some other specifications that I believe are more important. Let's start with the eye relief. So I've put all the models on one page along with the eye relief in millimeters. If you wear glasses, you want eye relief of at least 16 millimeters, ideally 18 millimeters, especially if you have thicker frames that sit farther away from your face. Now, eye relief is not just important for people with glasses. Too small of an eye relief, your eyes will start to get strained. Right away, you'll see the 8x42 millimeter binoculars within the same lineup almost always have a greater eye relief. Next, we have the field of view in degrees. Why is this important? Well, remember how I said the 8x42s are actually better for bird watching than 10x42s? That's because within the same lineup, the 8x42s are going to have a wider field of view. And when you're tracking small objects or objects that move, such as birds, it helps to have a greater field of view. Finally, we have the minimum focusing distance. This is provided in meters. Binoculars are not just for looking at things far away. If you expect to be observing things up close, this starts to factor in. Here are all the metrics all on one slide. We have successfully sliced and diced most of Nikon's consumer binoculars for easy comparison. I hope this little video was helpful. Thank you for watching.
And as always, let us know what you think in the comments section and subscribe for more.